everyone. Welcome back to another week of Ag Literacy Kayla. This book is Sugar Bush Spring by Marshall Wilson Hall, illustrated by Jim Dudley. In the month of the maple sugar moon, the snow's too wet for making. Icicles rain from Grandpa's porch roof and something stirring in the woods. It's Sugar Bush Spring. Grandpa hitches Rosie and Jack to the cutter. My fingers peek out of my jacket. No mittens today. And Rosie dazzles my hand for a treat. Maybe tomorrow, I promise her. She stomps and twists and jingles her bells. I wave to Grandpa, but he pulls me up next to him. This year you come with me, he says, then hands me the ring. Rosie and Jack know the way. I bounce the reins on their wrists as slight as Grandpa would. Sugar time, Rosie. He up, Jack. He calls. Into the woods, we slide under branches that hold up the sky. A crow puffs out of his satin chest. Caca, caca. The sun sinks on tree striped snow. Where's the sugar, Grandpa? Inside the trees, he says, feeding them, helping them grow. The trees give us their extra. I find two holes in a maple, one on each side, like the front and back belly buttons. Last year's taps, Grandpa tells me, will open new ones this year. Tap, tap, tap. There's one. Tap, tap, tap. Then the other. I hang a pell beneath each of them and wait. The sun size fills first. Ping, ping. Triple, triple, triple. He's running, Grandma, I shout. Grandpa half fills a jelly jar with sap. Spring tonic, he does, then sips and passes the jar to me. I put my eyes into microscopes. No bugs, no specks. Eyes clear. Mmm. Let's tap this one. I shout and try to reach around the trunk as well as Rosie. Too old, says Grandpa. Saw the taps? She's given and given till she's nearly given out. How about this one? I ask, wrapping my hands around the tree. Too young, Grandpa answers. She needs all the sugar she makes this year. She'll be ready when she fills up your arms. All around the sugar bush, I met who was ready, filling up my arm with trees. We drill and tap and hang pell after pell until my feet are freezing and the drip dripple of a hundred trees has stopped. Grandpa, the trees are empty, I shout. Grandpa laughs. They're just too cold, he tells me. We'll freeze tonight. They'll rest up and run hard again tomorrow. I'm to head back. He up, Rosie. Home, Jack. I all and we look through the purple under the maple sugar moon. We wake up the next morning. Frost is melting on the snow. I know the trees are busy. The temperature is rising. The sap is running. The buckets are filling. And neighbors and friends have come to work. Grandpa gives us jobs. Mama and Dad drive Rosie and Jack through the sugar book to gather the sap. At my buckets. Donna May washes last year's cells. I polish them sparkly. Grandma makes chicken and dumplings to feed our hungry crew. Molly and I haul firewood in Sugar House. Daniel has built a monster fire to boil the sap. Jill cook it down into thick syrup rivers. The Sugar House puffs out white clouds as soft fog. Ben and Ian leap through them and disappear. Hit, Ryan bags Molly. Over here, I shout. Molly chases in out of maple, in out of maple steam bathtub, warm cotton candy sweet. Already, this year house smells like pancakes. Isn't it yet? Ask him. Too soon, 
he says, and taps the thermometer, should be 290 degrees. Seven degrees to go. I keep an eye on the thermometer. 215, 216. The bubbles creep higher, swell into the top of the pan. There she blows, I yell. Jim flicks a drop of cream, and the sap settles right back down, dark and gleaming. A watched pot never boils over, he tells me. The silver needle jumps 208 degrees. That boils into fine gold bubbles. 219! Jim pours a caramel bowl from his long tin soup. We got syrup, he shouts. Grandpa draws off the syrup. The first two gallons and filters it clean. Too hot to taste yet, but just right for sugar on snow, he tells us. He drizzles the steaming syrup on the snow where it instantly hardens, then trails it into rooms for us to pull and stretch and share with Rosie. Back wax, Grandpa calls it. Around the cook fire, we eat dumplings, Roast marshmallows and tell stories while the cold sap blows into the pans, heats through and thickens and boils. We stir and dip and skim to draw off three more gallons. But we're not done yet. 200 more gallons of sap to cook before bed, Grandpa says. We toast our, to toast our toes and take naps in chairs in laps or on dogs. Stay easy to mind. We bought corn and play checkers and are easy way past our bedtimes. We've cooked the day's last bag. Ten gallons all. Grandpa off the bottles with syrup. Hot gold in gallons and quarts and pints. We seal them tight and lay each bottle on its side to cool. At last. Ah, we're done for today. the first bottle in place on the window next to the first bottle of last year's year and the first bottle of each year before that. Bottles colored like, like all lily, yellow and honey and bronze. A fine light for fancy grade, Grandpa declared of this year's batch. There's room in the pan and more, enough for a whole year of pancakes, cream and candy, then still some dough. Enough till next year when the woods stir and Grandpa and I again fill our arms with a tree. The end. I hope you enjoyed this week's reading of the Sugar Spring. If you are interested in seeing what resources are available on the Ag in the Classroom website, I will put the link down in the comments of this video. Otherwise, stay tuned for Monday. I think I'll Pretty sweet treat for you guys. As always, if you have any questions, our email are down at the bottom. Feel free to reach out to us. Have a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye.